G'day guys and welcome back to the Venture Beyond podcast. This is episode 7 where we had an opportunity to talk to Simon Kent from Disport app. Disport is really close to our hearts as we designed and developed the first version of the app and now it's been funded. So we had a really great discussion about Simon's experiences in launching and getting the funding that he needs to get to that next round of development. He believes it's going to be a unicorn and we do too and we're really excited for you to hear his story. Cool. So, um, yeah, I guess the, the goal of the podcast today is just to hear about your uh, experiences from when you walked through the door at, uh, in Piermont to our office, our business that was called Hustle Digital back then, to uh, now where you're CEO, founder. Yeah, co-CEO. Co-CEO, co-founder, co-founder yeah. of uh, Disport, that is a, a funded venture in the sports industry. Yep. Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, well, if we go back to the to the very beginning, you you guys might remember I I walked into Hustle Digital with a uh, big sheet of paper which had about a um, hundred ideas on it, and you and you both go, look, we don't like ninety nine of them. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, but we do like this one. We like the, we like the chat rooms. I know that um, the likes of Discord and and whatnot already existed, so the, you know the concept was already there, but. Um, in terms of the actual inspiration for the idea, um, you might not believe me, but it, I, I, I sort of came back up with it it's, uh, at uni all the way back in, in 2013. Um, and I wanted to call it the, the SIA, uh, the Sports Intelligence Agency. Um, but I'd ne- I didn't do anything about it for many years. And I, I, was, uh, I was working in real estate. I had a bit of, uh, a bit of money that, I, that I'd earned. And I just thought, you know what, like I... Um, <clears throat> I want to. I want to one day be my own boss. Um, I don't want to work for someone else for the rest of my life. And I, I just thought, why not? You know, why not while I'm young have a crack and um, and go out and try something. And I, you know, you you two probably both know, but uh, I'm a sports fanatic. You know, I love uh, rugby league, cricket, everything really. And I watch I watch all the games. Apart from and, football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> apart, apart from football, exactly. <laughs> I, I understand football, but I, I definitely... Didn't we play I, football together when we, we were did. kids? We did, yeah, when we were so kids. What that's, happened? Was James that's, too good? Is that, is that why you don't like that, it anymore? That's actually interesting because Simo and I have known each other for a very long time. And when I was going, when I was trying to like, you know, I didn't know any app developers and I was like, you know, I've got this idea. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know the process. I don't know anything about um, app development. I actually didn't even know anything about starting a company at that stage. So I was just, I remember I called, I called Simo and I was, uh, I was outside the front of my work and I was just like... Hey man, like, do you remember me? <laughs> remember me from all those years ago playing uh, playing soccer together down at Queens Park? And he's like, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, you know, and uh, and uh, we we had a conversation. Um, he said, you know, why don't you why don't you come in to bring the idea to us? And uh, and that was like he said back at back at Piermont. And I I came in. I think it was about March from memory of twenty twenty. It was before COVID. It was yeah. pretty, yeah. It was, we could have a per, in-person meeting. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I came in, and uh, and Ant was there, and we had a we had a sit down. We had a bit of a brainstorm uh, on the whiteboards. And that, look, even it's still at that stage, it was so it was so like it was a pipe dream. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, wasn't wasn't the idea different that you brought to us originally? It was like a bit more of a Facebook page was, kind of thing. Yeah, it was like a what I wanted like was a like a centralized sports platform where you could get your news. You could, you know, you could um, follow players. Like it's obviously pivoted and evolved since then. But yeah, it was like this all-inclusive centralized sports platform, kind of like Facebook, I guess, um, but just for sport. You, yeah. can, you know, you get injury updates, the likes, all that sort of teams, fixtures. Do you remember why we didn't like that idea? <laughs> I can't remember. I remember that part of the, that part of the video. I think it was just too hard, you know? Like it was, no, it was it, because then we went and looked at the App Store and we're, we're like, there's heaps of competitors here doing that already. Yeah, that's and right. Had, like, they had a lot of downloads and good reviews and ratings and it was kind of like, and we always talk about yeah. you know, differentiation and making sure you're doing something unique. And we, we worked on that. We worked on that idea. Yeah, you, it was, you know when I brought in that sheet that sheet of paper with all the with all the ideas on it, that the chat rooms idea which we ended up going with, I I'd actually only thrown in that like a couple of days before. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, that's kind of a cool feature. And then that was the only one that you got you guys were like, 
That's yeah, the right. One we that, do. that was a, that was a feature on oh, the, yeah. on the of the platform, exactly. and then we kind of we was we it, went. Was it originally into that. to be centered around a game, or it was just broader? No, it wasn't even it was centered around chat. a game. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. It was it like we kind of that that feature that we ended up you know um, developing together. Um, that was yeah. That what that pivoted even from the very beginning from our first session together. So, yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, like I think it might have even been Simo. I was like, "Oh, we should we should do it for a live game." And I was like, "Is that possible?" I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You yeah. guys, you and guys. Are... Enough at that time, we probably didn't know 100 <laughs> percent whether it was possible. But you know, yeah. you guys are guiding me here. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just. <laughs> no, but I think the key point is, is you came to us with something that was like trying to do too much of everything for everybody, yeah. which is a really hard place to start with the business. Yeah, you got to find a niche, do that thing well, make it unique, uniquely differentiated. Like solve a problem. Yeah, or I remember. Create something cool. I think that's what we kind of. I think with apps, not in general, but if you're crea- trying to like create an app that's then going to go and get evaluated, get a good valuation, you want to try and create something cool. You want to inspire people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember that was actually one of the first things you said to me. You said, "Look, don't try and solve the world's problems. Just do one and do it well. Yeah. And then you know we can we can we can make this this thing evolve together. And then you know hopefully um when it does launch uh we can you know build it up to be something pretty special. And, yeah. that, and that's kind of what we did. I just, I'll give context to the people watching about what we ended up building um, out of that first workshop was Disport. It was a live sports chat room where it uh, created a chat room for every single game that was live in the world for eight sports or something like that, nine sports. Yeah, I think uh, I think we had eight or nine. So yeah. we integrated with a couple like different um, data sources to be able to spawn chat rooms for every single game and people could go on there and chat exactly pretty cool novel idea kind of like a discord somewhere in between like a sports discord that was like live and dynamic and also you could have the private chats too so it wasn't just it was public discussion and private discussion exactly exactly yeah you know what yeah go yeah i was gonna say we like we we knew at that stage that you know the concept works. Like I was just going to mention Discord, for example. I I actually didn't know Discord before I made the name Disport. Just so, just I want to have that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, as we did our research, we knew the concept works. Chat people love to be involved in chat rooms, and you know, obviously, sports such a big industry um, with lots of money, lots of fans, and lots of like real fandom. And people love discussing sporting events um, together whenever there's a, you know, a post online let's say it's about the NBA, there's always a thousand comments going, everyone's got the, you know, their own opinion of what happened in that game or some referee's decision. Um, so we knew that, you know, that, that market was there already. It was just how to capture that, capture that audience, I guess. Yeah. Talk us through the emotions or the experience of like, so we came up with this idea, you paid us to build it. You also, we offered to take a bit of equity for a reduced price. And yeah, I'd you always, us back, but it, I, I, no, I admire the fact <laughs> that you, that you knocked no, us. He did it. He did I don't it. know if I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I admire the fact that you decided to just pay for the thing yourself. Um, so you paid that money. This is all your own savings. Yeah. Launched on the market. Uh, what happened? Tell us, like, run us through what happened when you launched. Yeah, there was, um, yeah, there was a lot of emotions. So yeah, like, like I said, it was it was just me at the beginning. I I had a had a bunch of savings and I stuck it all into the development. Um, you guys know exactly how much it was. <laughs> and yeah, you then risked, you risked a bit. Yeah, I risked it. I risked a bit. It was you know, like I said before, I was young, so I was happy to do it. It was just uh, it was a gamble. Um, and yeah, look, leading up to launch, I think it was again. I think it was um, mid year. I know it was for an NRL game. I remember exactly where I was. The emotions were. God, I just hope it doesn't crash. That was that was the one thing that I was like, I, I, I know that all my family and friends, like I posted on my social um, social media that you know we're launching on this day for this game. Can everyone jump into the chat room? Um, the emotions were, I just I just wanted it to work. That mm. was it. That was all I could think about. I was like, please just let it work. That's yeah. it. Um, yeah. And then when it did work, and I had such great feedback um, after that initial initial launch i was uh, it just you know it just made made me happy i knew and i knew that like uh the concept again i know i mentioned it before but i knew it could work uh long term what were the experience what, talk, talk us through the first launch the first match like how many people used it yeah so oh, look if i'm remembering correctly it was uh the chat room had about 60 odd people in it um it was an nrl game i was at the north bondi rsl as i usually am on a thursday night 
Um, <laughs> and yeah, look, uh, it had about 60 people. A lot of them were family and friends. I didn't actually initially post like um, in so much of a public forum or anything like that. So, you know, the public wouldn't, uh, wouldn't essentially know about it at, at that stage because I wanted... I wanted family and friends and uh, obviously I think you guys would have told some some people um, yeah. that you knew that it was happening. But I just wanted to get that first initial night launch where it was, you know, people I knew, there wasn't a bunch of randoms commenting on something that like this, you know, this isn't, isn't good or something like that. I didn't, I didn't want to take criticism on night one. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? That's hard. <laughs> so I just wanted to, you know, get the family and friends in. They were always going to give me good positive feedback. And I was like, okay, right, that first, that first bit's done. Yep. Um, and then now let's move on to the, the actual, you know, in more public uh, well, yeah, forum. Well, you know, yeah. it, was, that was, uh, it was hard for us as well yeah. to, to see you go through that. It always is when we, when we launch something new. Because we, we know what we're doing in terms of tech stack. And yep. I guess a testament to that is the fact that it didn't crash. It, it did work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But the, but you, we always expect there to be some feedback. Something did go wrong. There was there was one user that couldn't have uh, couldn't log in for some reason. Yeah, and it kept yeah. going to a white screen, and we end up finding that that issue. But one out of sixty something, I mean, that's that's a win. Yeah, that's yeah. a win. That's a um, win. So it's we're you know we're nervous in those moments too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sh I'm sure it dominates your thoughts because you you're putting you're putting that money on the line, and and I guess your your future as well because because this is where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I wanted to ask though, it's it's interesting that you decide you decided to pursue an app business or an internet business, a digital business, but you're not that way inclined. Yeah. Um, why not? Why not take the, that money and go into something, you know, more traditional? Look, that's actually a really good question. I have I've never been asked that before. Um, and look, I think at the time I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do with my life. Um, it's probably the best way to, to answer that is that I didn't, I had, I had, look, I had some savings. I knew I wanted to be my own boss, but I just didn't have any understanding of exactly what I wanted to do, whether it was, you know, real estate or, or, you know, whatever it may be. And I just thought, look, I, I have an idea and there's, you know, you see in a lot in the tech space, uh, particularly at that time leading up to the 2021 when tech just, you know, went crazy. Yeah. Um, I knew that there was money in that space and that was, that was literally my thought process. I want to, I want to be my own boss. I want to make as much money as I can. Um, and the way I see that personally for me is to, is to create an app. Okay, and cool. I had, and I, I love sport. Um, like I said before, and I, I, I had the idea. Yeah. So yeah, that's how and, I, and does it, has that translated now, now that you're obviously you're funded, you know, you, you've got to go through this growth, growth phase. Uh, do you have any, any apprehension or concern about the fact that you, that you not tech focused? How, how are you overcoming that? Because what the reason I asked the question is because it's, uh, it's you're in a challenging spot, but also the, I think there's a superpower to that too, because I look at I look at my role sometimes and I think I really shouldn't be doing some of this dev. <laughs> like seriously, why am I doing this? Yeah, you know? Yeah. And I and, I, and uh, as good as it is, I can get in the kitchen. At the same time, I kind of wish I couldn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then I would then I'd have to delegate. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, how do you how the, do you feel the about answer, going? Yeah. To that? The answer to that question is that at the beginning it was just me. Um, the team has now grown uh, substantially since then, obviously with the funding and uh, a couple of uh, people who've joined the team uh, are very tech focused and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so well, I have I have a lot of um, advisors, people who are, you know who've done who've grown businesses before, people who've been in the industry for a long time before, yeah. um, and obviously a, a large part of that is our a, a development team as well who are highly skilled in 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 the whole tech side of things. So. My expertise, while it's not while it's not tech, tech yeah. essentially, like I I, uh, I obviously add value in in other areas. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah just uh, not to come back. I was I was really enjoying the the play by play of how 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 we got here. Yeah, like so the just coming back to the the launch, um, and the first night being a, a success with family and friends. I remember my first experience where I'm like, oh shit, this you know this is awesome because I was tracking it as well. Like yeah. we just launched it. I'm checking the app pretty frequently, seeing how many users are on it. I remember like a week or two later, there was a game. I think it was like quarter, was it around quarterfinals time or it, something like that? It, it was yeah, like it was. It something was, significant. I couldn't remember exactly, I can't remember exactly what it was. Maybe you do. It, it was, it wasn't, we weren't quite up to finals yet, but it was, you know, sort of uh, maybe five or six weeks before. Yeah. So. Anyway, it was like it, maybe a few weeks after you launched yeah. and in another chat room, uh, I'd constantly I'd send Anthony a little message on Slack, be like 100 people in a chat room yeah. last night. You yeah. know, and like I, I remember being at the pub and I was telling a friend about it 
and we just logged on at that time. There was a game playing and there was like 50 people in the chat. And there was a dude you know, putting, put a video up of him like chugging a beer on the, on the, <laughs> in the chat room. And yeah. I was like, hey, that's, that's awesome. Like I could see that it was starting to pick up a bit, bit of momentum. But um, I, I'm sure it, was, it didn't feel that way necessarily the whole way through. No, that was the most... How was the ride? That was the most nerve wracking because, you know, all well and good to have a, to have a good opening night. Um, but that, that period after, after, um, obviously the first game in the first chat room was the most nerve wracking period because I was trying to work out how do I, how do I advertise this thing? How do I, you know, how do I get users not only, um, downloading the app, but then coming back for more and, you know, joining more chat rooms and whatnot. So that was really hard. I was doing all the, um, all the marketing and without like, budget as well, without budget and yeah. like design and stuff for, for the socials by myself, um, Again, while having a full time job too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. While while working full time, and I um, it was it was hard, and I just didn't like there was there was a there was a, a big lull, like mm. a lull there where where uh, users stopped going into the chats, and I'm going, oh god, yeah. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what yeah. do I do here? You know. Um, but that was it. Kind of that was a, a bit of a turning point anyway, because that was I was reaching out. What my my uh, my strategy was at the time was um, I was reaching out to athletes, NRL players. Um, on Instagram and sending them was sliding into their DMs. <laughs> um, sliding right in there. Sliding right in there, yeah. exactly. Um, creepy. <laughs> yeah, the second sliding. Yeah, exactly. We probably didn't it's like, the second yeah. one. <laughs> Jesus, James. <laughs> anyway. um, yeah, and I, I, I messaged obviously oh, quite a few of them and a lot of them are high profile. It would have been great to have gotten a high profile um, guy from the, from, the, from the onset. And the strategy was just to, to get a couple of them, pay them um, to do some to do some posts for me and on their Instagrams just to try and migrate some people over the app. Um, and what ended up happening is I, um, I reached out to Alex Johnson who plays for South Sydney, uh, on the wing and he, he was quite receptive and he came back to me and he said, look, um, this sounds great. Do you want to, do you want to send me across a, uh, a pitch deck? And I had obviously, um, collated one of them. So I, uh, I sent it across. Uh, so how long, how many people, how many things did you try and how many, athletes did you reach out to until aj and I, how long how long after the the launch was it so trying to put it in perspective here i think the launch from memory was in june and i think i reached out to aj uh, probably probably in august um but in that time period i'd, I'd reached out to maybe maybe 100 maybe 120 um mean, and, uh, mean, nrl guys meanwhile doing social posts meanwhile yeah. doing website yeah. meanwhile doing like everything that you could possibly do yeah i, I, I actually with like personalized messages to the personalized to the, uh, messages yeah, yeah exactly so it, it, was, it would have taken a lot of time to actually produce that, that yeah. content I, I, I labor on the point because it's something that we tell everybody we work with who are founders or start starting a new business is that when you start a new business you just need to try everything yeah 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 you need to try everything and you need to just have a thick skin and just keep trying some more. Find yeah. the thing that works and just then go down that path. I really like, I, I really didn't have a solid plan at that stage. Like yeah. I, I, I knew like I'd, I'd spent all the money in the development. So there wasn't a budget to actually like expedite the growth process. Um, so at that stage it was all, the plan was just social media. That's all I could do really. And then I had it like a little bit of a kitty that I was building up, like I said, to, um, to pay some players, some ambassador type roles. But what I found out is that they would, I spoke to agents and I spoke to um, a couple of them individually. And, and it was like, I was gonna have to pay like 10 grand for two Instagram stories. Yeah. And I was like, no surprise. like I'm, Insane. I'm, I'm not paying you 10 grand to do two stories. No you know way. what I mean? I might, yeah. get, I might get 10 users, yeah. you know? <laughs> that's a thousand thousand dollars a user. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was that it was timely that when I did message AJ, he, he flicked on the, um, the, the pitch deck to his, uh, media manager at the time. And he, he liked the deck. We caught up, um, a couple of times. He had some great ideas. He's run, his name's Ryan Gardner, by the way, I'm sure he want me to mention that <laughs> ryan how are you mate should we have invited him too or what? <laughs> yeah, now, now i feel bad Sorry, ryan. um yeah he had some great ideas we 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 hit it off we've uh, become good mates in in the process and we've uh since then he he joined he joined on we've since then been building it out um and uh and aj as well uh who's been great in you know introducing us to players and um and investors and and whatnot so he's also joined uh come on board as a as a, an equity holder or partner in the business too. So an important piece that I think you kind of skimmed over there is what happened when AJ responded. 
because that, oh, yeah. that's what triggered it all, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I, firstly, I got, I got a response from AJ with a blue tick and I was like, oh, like, yeah. oh, oh my God, I've actually, I've actually got one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I caught one. <laughs> yeah, it's like got fishing. I'm, like, oh. <laughs> I'm going, oh, wow, actually, he's come back to me. So, um, yeah, and I was just like, oh, you know, it's like, I was like, how long do I wait to respond to him? <laughs> I was like, do I just go straight into it or... Um, but I was like, look, I'm sitting here on my phone. He, I've obviously got his attention right now. You, sl- you slid into his DM. Yeah, right? yeah. So I'm not going to wait any longer because he might just get bored and go away. So yeah, yeah. straight away, I was, you know, obviously a bit excited. Did have a bit, bit of a, um, I guess, like a, a pitch via, via message yeah. um, about the idea. He came back to me straight away. He said, look, I, I really like the idea. I think it's really cool. Um, and, you know, like I said before, he he, uh, he passed over the pitch deck that I sent him to his private email over to Ryan and then uh, here we are. But what, the thing I'm missing, though, is he replied then and then the, the thing that triggered this new evolution of Disport, which I think is like where the massive value in Disport is about to, well, what, what's made the valuation what it is, but also the direction that you're taking it. Is that AJ came onto the app, right? And he, yeah, so he, that that was our that was our beta test. Yeah, that yeah. was your beta test. So, so yeah, we. So was the beta test? Had you already conceived the the future of Disport before he came onto the app and did the chat room, or it was after? Oh the chat yes, room? no, no. We we had we had um, we had conceived the future. We we knew that. Okay. Um, that was part of the plan. AJ coming into the chat room. So yeah. Okay, but um, but you but you positioned it as a beta test because that was ideal for the the investor pitch right yeah the, the well we, we exactly and we knew we knew we couldn't we couldn't just have uh like the problem the first problem with that chat room just to uh start kind of at the end and then go back to the beginning is that people were changing their names to aj and like <laughs> right. andrew johns and yeah. stuff like that and like and something quade you, cooper and stuff and so yeah. it was just confusing so we knew we couldn't just have public chat rooms with athletes um in these chat rooms sure. yeah um so yeah look it, it was positioned as a beta test for to then redevelop and and actually you know formulate a different a, a different, different business model right yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and and the piece that uh, like just to give context to people watching who weren't who didn't witness what happened you brought aj into the into the app, app um aj released on his instagram profile that he was going to be in disport and yep. if any users wanted to chat with him, they'd have to jump on between a certain time. Yeah. Was there a, a competition or a award or something? Or so he did. He did one one post on his Instagram, which was about a, a 30, 30 second long video. He had a signed uh, South Sydney Rabbitohs jersey um, that he got obviously from training. Got all the boys to sign, um, and then we had him uh, come into the chat room. So the, the chat rooms would open generally about seven a week or so before the actual game um so we were going to just do one week one week beta test and we wanted to see what we could accomplish in one week with one player um aj being that player and so he his um his sort of uh things that he had to accomplish in that week was that he was going to go into the chat room uh on i think who they were playing on the friday from memory he had to go in on the wednesday spend about 30 34 30 45 minutes uh in the chat room talk to anyone who's in there post the video which he did um, he had a big TikTok following, but we didn't get him to post it on that because we just wanted to see the Instagram first off, um, and then obviously play the game, and then uh, and then after the game we'd go in after the game and we'd announce the winner of uh, of the jersey. So he did all those things. He was great. I will just say that AJ was awesome that whole week. He did uh, everything and beyond. The the reception from the fans, obviously all of his Instagram or most of them Instagram followers are going to be South Sydney fans, and um, we had. I think we had over 560 iOS downloads from that one video since the one video, and then another another um, 120 odd on the Google Google side of things, and we uh, the chat room filled up immediately. So that game, and it was a, that was that was a finals game, and it was against the Roosters, so it's a big game as well. Um, we had we had over over 350 people in that chat room easily. Um, and they were all chatting away. There was there was a few issues with you know like there was kids and adults and um, you know like people talking about gambling and oh, right. drinking and stuff like yeah. that and swearing. But we sure. did have we did have the profanity filter, yeah, which you did, guys yeah. you guys uh, put in there. But you know but that these was are the things you learn. Yeah, exactly, you know, exactly. What you need to um, the the terms and conditions yeah. and the the state of play essentially for those users. And we sat down with AJ after cause he's a, he was, um, he was in the chat room talking to these people and we got, we got all his feedback, what he'd do differently, how, he, how he'd, um, you know, how he'd go about it in the future. We sat down with a couple of the P 
people like random fans the one who won the uh, won the jersey we sat down with her and got her feedback we sat down with uh david gallup who was um the ceo of uh of the nrl for over 10 years got his feedback on on the beta test and really sort of collected all the data put it into the into the pitch deck and that was going to be our you know our sort of centerpiece of the pitch deck of how yeah. we were going to get investment proved that you that you had a market or you yeah. were solving a problem yeah and did it also like prove the metrics around acquisition yeah, yeah. Well, like that one one video, one player, um, and one week. I think we I think we only put about seventy dollars worth of advertising spend into that into that week, and uh, and we had all that all that uh, amazing feedback. We had people messaging us on Instagram, like complete complete randoms, being like, "This is this is amazing." Like, yeah. I'm I'm so happy that I'm talking to AJ. Like, the, it's hard to like fathom the level of fans mm. fandom these people have like they're mm. like superstars the connection with mm. yeah. yeah and yeah. that's what we're really like the next the next um launch that's or the next uh, concept slash business that we're that we're coming up with with the app um that's what we're really trying to do is get that connection between fan and athlete and monetize that obviously the thing that i think is really cool about the the aj story is like i didn't realize but what you've said there is that you conceive the the, the future for for Disport before actually getting him in a chat room. I thought it was like a happy kind of coincidence no. of having him in there. So that's I mean genius. Uh, like just just quietly, I, I you know I take my hat off to that um, because I didn't see that. I, I, obviously, you were having the conversations, but I hadn't seen that kind of vision, future vision. And I don't want to give too much away because I, I know you want to try and keep some of the functionality uh, tight. Um, but essentially, it's going to be a platform where fans can connect with with athletes on a on a kind of deeper level. Yeah, exactly. We want to we want we want to get that absolute fandom, and a, a part of it as well is that we we realize that there's you would have you would have seen in the NRL, um, NRLW, you know, there's been the likes of the AFL and whatnot as well, and look and pay pay around globally sport is that um, there's pay disputes, and a lot of these a lot of these NRL players in particular. And athletes who aren't, you know, your top tier LeBron James type guys, um, they have they have this fandom, but they're not doing anything to monetize it. Um, and Is that because they can't, or well, or? they've got they they're allowed to, you know, work with brands and whatnot, but they've got restrictions with their clubs. You know, they can't wear the if it's South South jerseys and stuff like that. That's right. all. That's all sort of the South IP. Okay. Um, but they're doing brand deals like, you know, Manscaped, for example. But there's, you know, there's always disputes about what they can and can't say and what they will and won't do. Mm. Um, so what we realise is that they're not, they're not, like they have 300, 400,000 followers. Yep. And they're not doing anything with their followers. Like mm. they've got this huge engagement level, this the level of fandom. And again, I don't want to give too much away, but what we notice is that they can, they can make a lot of money out of that, but they're not actually doing it yet. It's good to actually see it come to life mm. you know what i mean like that they before it was you know like uh oh, it might have it might have been something but mm. now it kind of is it is something yeah now. so it's well good. at least enough people enough people think so yeah exactly it's good to see that a lot all those people come on board and and you know show belief in the yeah. business which is like the, i reckon the hardest thing for any someone starting a business is other people believing you know you can believe in yourself but if for other sure. people start believing in the business and that's yeah. great you know what i mean well there's customers i mean or users in your case mm. and and now you've got like reputable people in the industry. Yeah, that's that's been the main thing is that we've you know we've been at, we've been managed to sit down and 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 sell these you know these people these individ high net worth individuals yeah. uh, on the concept and on the just, concept yeah. and they put they put up money and yeah. and also introduce you to the right people. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's actually interesting about sport in particular. I feel like that that industry is quite protected in terms of what is able to is what new products or or service providers or people getting into sport is not particularly easy. Like my, in my experience personally, I, we, we had an opportunity to work with uh, the, um, the roosters yeah. like a long time ago and it all, it all looked like it was going well. And then uh, some other service provider came in and just basically took it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it just felt like it was hard to get the meeting. It seemed like they took it seriously, but it, at the same time, it didn't feel like we had a chance. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the point is, is that like it, you've got all these reputable people in sport, and that that it must be it, it speaks volumes to what you're trying to do, yeah. the concept, and and obviously adds a lot of credibility. It's yeah, it's been it's been super exciting the 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 growth um, in the last you know 
four months. We've really, and even that's over, that's over a holiday period as well. Um, and you know, like we've got, we've got these, these high net worth individuals who, who individuals, sorry, who've shown, who've shown belief in the business and we've sat down with, and we did a lot of, we sat down with a lot of different people to get to where we are. You know, when you, when you're raising funds, you, you know, you go into one meeting and then that meeting opens the door to the next meeting, which opens the door to the next meeting, which opens the door to the next meeting. And you've got, you know, before you know it, you've had 70 coffees and you know, not one person has given you any money. Um, <laughs> and you're like, I'm, I've just spent 400 bucks on I'm coffee. Shaking, shaking <laughs> um, yeah. And then but it, it, I, what we found with the, with the raise in particular is that once the, once that first penny drops yeah. and someone someone shows that belief in the business and the idea and the concept and and you i guess as 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 a team and individuals um then it's much easier to sell to the next one you totally, know there's yeah. always safety in numbers yeah, you know? yeah and yeah, people yeah. are people are people when they're giving up money they want to know that someone else has also shown belief in the business so, totally sure. yeah totally. been a lot of stories like that i mean uh not to not to bring up the worst example, but Theranos. That is oh, exactly yes. what happened there. Yeah, yeah, happened yeah. there, and I hope it doesn't happen to you. <laughs> <They> <laughs> but actually, you're not you're not trying to save lives. They actually so. didn't even have didn't even have. A, they barely had a product. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were just still trying to develop it. it well, yeah. it was it was uh, it was delivering um, false test results. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was a good series, actually. It I was. Know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you watch that, I'd love to get some just words of wisdom and advice uh, for other entrepreneurs. <laughs> From your experience, because it, it, it has been a successful experience it's, and you're, you're on that path to make it something incredible. So what, what would you say would be one thing you could pass on to the audience that, that might motivate them or help them, help them through a tough time? I knew you'd ask me this. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I think the biggest one for me or, you know, the piece of advice I could give anyone is, you know, firstly, the, the cliches, you know, just, you know, have, have a bit of faith in yourself and go and take a risk. Um, you know, the only thing that can go wrong from taking a risk is you learn a lesson. Yeah. I know that a whole lot of people already say that, but, uh, the biggest one for me is that I thought at the beginning that I, I thought it was actually more beneficial to do it alone. And I think for me, that was just so totally wrong to build a, to build a really good business in my opinion now is to have a really good team and to have really good people around you, surround yourself with people who know more about um, you know, like whether it be tech or, or so, sales yeah. or whatever it is, yeah, so, know so more true. about you, yeah. know more than you. So I think for me, the, the greatest advice I can give of anyone is, you know, is to assemble, if you can, a, a really good team. And uh, a point, uh, just a point on that though, what I think you've done well and is, uh, look, it's, it depends on the idea and the industry and how much money you need and a whole bunch of variables, but you did the start yourself. You know, you took that risk yourself such that you put yourself in a position to be able to to be able to have enough equity that it's still yours yeah, like, yeah. in a lot of ways. Because if you give away too much early, you end up with, you know, a business that's a bunch of other people yeah, that, yeah. that you break your back for. Yeah. Um, so do you think that that's, that makes, like, it still makes sense how you started and, and when you brought team members in? Yeah. And look, I think just on that point, I think we've been... Um, I don't want to give away exactly what the valuation that we raised at is, but we, we raised it a really, a really um, healthy valuation, which has allowed me and, and other larger shareholders in the business to not give too much away. But yeah, I completely agree with you at the beginning because it was, you know, 100% mine in terms of equity. Um, I still now hold the majority, which is great. I, it's still my business. Um, I can't hopefully get kicked out of the business. <laughs> yeah. So look, there's, there's, there's always, you know, there's two, two ways to uh, skin a cat. I don't know if that's allowed to be said. <laughs> well, um, you know, you'd be an outlier in tech startups then for founders, you know, in having, in going through a raise and still having the majority of equity. Yeah. Uh, so it, it probably is the right call what you did, you know, um, take it on yourself. And I think the thing I look at from your story that, that I think is really important is having the humility and the dedication to do a lot of things that aren't going to nece necessarily lead to the dopamine hit. Yeah. You know, like a lot of messages, a lot of hard work yeah. while, you know, while working a full-time job, dedication to it, not expecting anybody else to do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like just seeing, seeing it through. Yeah. Seeing um, it through. Cause it, it'd be very, it would have been very easy to just pull out. You know? Yeah. Like did when you, it, did you consider that at any point? I didn't. No, I didn't. I was. I was. I'm being honest. I didn't. I didn't yeah, consider no, pulling out. I, I, I um, smile because that's like, <laughs> it's, it's the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. Like it, there, 
there is there's always moments when you know when when anything that's hard it's there's moments where you can pull out and you might feel like pulling out but i i was always going to go through it and i think like for me there wasn't really a long like lull where it was really bad where things were really bad like it's been quite a um quite a steady and then and then fast progression which has been amazing so i haven't i haven't really been in the down in the dumps ever going oh God, like yeah, you only yeah. really had that two yeah. min, two month kind yeah. of window. There. I just wasted all this money, and now, yeah. now, yeah. now I don't know what to do. So, yeah, yeah. Well, it, you, I can see why you didn't have that. And looking at other projects we've we've developed over the years, yours is starkly different because you actually listened to the advice. Yeah. Like we didn't go and build a massive set of functionality. We just did one one thing really well. Yeah. Yeah. And we were able to deliver on that and it was easier for us and it was a better outcome for you too. Um, and then you're able to pivot from there, even though you haven't had to change too much either. Yeah. Which Agreed. is which is great. Um, what about now? What, what's uh, what's one challenge you're, you're trying to overcome right now? Challenge at the moment. Um, look, there's there's kind of a lot happening at the moment. Um, we... We're still not done with our with our fundraise. We have raised enough funds to you know to give us a runway um, of about twelve months, which is great. But we we had a target and we do want to reach that target. And like the fundraise is not is not easy. You know, getting people to to part ways with large sums of money, believe in the idea, believe in the business, believe in you. So that's you know that's certainly one challenge that we're having at the moment. Uh, Communication is also uh, a challenge. Having more people involved in the business um, there's a lot of different people who um, have a lot of different expertise and uh, you know making sure that everyone's happy keeping keeping your investors that are already investors happy keeping everyone updated keeping your you know your schedule like and personally for me I'm still working full-time um, so that's a challenge for me as well being able to fit time in for uh, you know disport and and my um, my current role so yeah look those are probably the main challenges Personally, yeah, for sense. me at the moment, I'm sure Ryan would probably give you a couple of different ones. <laughs> <laughs> and for the business, what, what's one of the challenges right now? Um, getting it getting it right, I think. So we're we're in development, and the challenge would be we want it. We want to come to market with something that's going to blow everyone out of the water. Um, we know it's different. We know that it doesn't exist at the moment. Um, so we just we want to make sure that when when we do go live, that it it just, like I said, it blows everyone out of the water. We want yeah. the we want the user experience to be amazing. We want um, everything to be in place and the strategy to be so spot on that when we go live, um, it you know. Yeah, it's I'd it. say that that's the difference between now and then. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Then you could kind of you, you knew you you can be nimble you can kind of get it wrong yeah but now you're funded yeah yeah you've got to make sure it works oh yeah and there's you know? there's there's a, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of eyes there's yeah. a lot of eyes on yeah, it exactly yeah. yeah yeah man I'm just excited for another couple of years time you come back on here yeah and <laughs> see see what happens or oh. a year or whatever it is it might even be less but. I can't I can't wait and yeah. uh, for anyone out there who's looking to uh, to build an app. <laughs> well that's an endorsement <laughs> and on that note we'll leave it there <laughs> uh, thank you it's been it's been uh great watching the journey uh come to life and you know you're just at the you're just at the the start of something really big so i hope so mate I hope so yeah. it seems that me. way thanks for having me guys cheers thanks for coming